Israel can build ties to the Arab world based on the common regional threats they face without also resolving the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, the UN Special Coordinator for the Middle East Peace Process Nikolay Mladenov told the Jerusalem Post, the Palestinian question remains a very emotional issue for the Arab public, said Mladenov, who will be appearing at the Post's diplomatic conference on December 6. Be the first to know, join our Facebook page. Function D, S, I, D, VAR, J, S, F, J, S equal D get elements patag name, S, 0, if, D get element beard, I, D, return, J, S equal D creatilement, S, J, S dot I, D equal I, D, J, S, S, R, C equal slash slash connect Facebook dot net slash N underscore us slash all J, S number X, F, B, M, L equal 1 and app I, D equal 1, 6, 3, 4, 1, 4, 8, 0, 6, 8, 9, 7. FJS parent note insert before, JS, FJS, document, script, Facebook JSSDK, I do not believe any Arab leader, whether a king or a president, can go to their own people without saying something on how the Palestinian question is being addressed, Mladenov said he spoke with the Post last week, as Israel has increased its outreach to moderate Arab countries, primarily Saudi Arabia which are banding together to oppose Iran Defense Minister Avigdor Lieberman has called for moderate Arab leaders to visit Jerusalem to form a coalition against Tehran with Israel IDF, Chief of Staff Lieutenant, General. Gadi Eisenkot gave an interview to a Saudi newspaper, explaining that Israel was ready to share intelligence against Iran with moderate Arab countries, including theirs infrastructure minister Yuval Steinitz told Army Radio on Sunday. We have ties that are indeed partly covered with many Muslim and Arab countries, and usually we are the party that is not ashamed. Mladenov said that Israel and the moderate Arab countries have a clear common threat assessment, but that this was not enough the former Bulgarian foreign minister, who has been in his current job for the last two years, arrived in Israel after spending time as the UN special representative in Iraq. His time there allowed him to understand how the consciousness of the Arab world has undergone a sea change when it comes to the threat from radical groups such as ISIS, the realization in the region that they have to stand up for moderation and fight radicalism is something that happened very recently, Mladenov said. If they had understood this earlier, we might not have seen the collapse of states and the emergence of ISIS. Already in 2013 and 2014, it was clear to the UN in Iraq that ISIS would seize control, Mladenov recalled we literally knew the date that Mosul would fall and this is the UN speaking. If we knew, others should have known far in advance of us, he said, adding that the region's interest back then to stand up to such a threat was close to zero. Whole communities in Syria and Iraq collapsed because they were disenfranchised, marginalized and isolated from authorities, he said Mladenov recalled a 2013 protest about housing and health in Ramadi, Iraq, just before Christmas instead of addressing these concerns, the government sent in troops and many people were shot within the next two to three months, the peaceful protest that had been in place was overtaken by ISIS, and the agenda changed completely, Mladenov said within six months. Ramadi, Faluya and the whole area was in the hands of ISIS. Fifty years ago, the Middle East was threatened by war, the UN Special Coordinator said. Now, the danger comes from collapsing states and imploding societies that are vulnerable to outside interference and meddling and radical agendas, he warned, saying this was the case in Syria, Libya, Iraq and Yemen. Initially, Middle Eastern leaders thought the threat was localized, assuming it was specific to the country in question, and would not impact them. Mladenov said now they know the entire region is susceptible to the toxic mix of radicalism and the meddling of outside forces.